Hi. Right. The microscope, the microphone's kind of a uh, surprise for me, but I'm happy it's here. Can you hear me in back? Okay. All right. So my name is Michelle Turner. I am a PhD student at Binghamton University, SUNY Binghamton, and I'm going to talk today uh, about my master's thesis, which was a ceramic analysis study on uh, surface ceramics from Aztec North and from four other sites nearby Aztec North. I'll, I'll say more about the sites in just a minute, but I first want to give a little bit of context for anybody who's not real familiar with Aztec ruins. I'll keep it brief. Um, but I do want to sort of have give everybody the dates so you have that in mind as I talk about the dates for Aztec North. So I'm sure everybody's pretty much familiar with Aztec West, the beautiful uh, Chaco and Great House that you can visit there, excavated by Earl Morris really the epitome of a chocolate outlier, right? The biggest chocolate outlier. Um, construction there really gets going around 1110. Starts maybe a little earlier, but, but really gets going 1110. It wraps up by about 1120, although the Great House continues to be used after that, of course. Most of you are probably also aware about Aztec East, which is next to Aztec West, but it hasn't been quite as much, uh, hasn't been as much excavation there. It's a little later than Aztec West. Construction starts around 1120, basically. It wraps up at Aztec West and moves over to Aztec East. But we're still in the Chacoan period when it starts. Uh, but then construction continues for a long time, for more than a century. So Aztec North, the site that I'm talking about today, is a little bit less well known because it's unexcavated. And it's on top of the river terrace, sometimes called the North Mesa. I call it the terrace. Uh, this is behind and above Aztec West and Aztec East. So, an unexcavated site, but it has been surveyed in the 1980s. John Stein and Peter McKenna conducted a survey of the whole River Terrace, published a report about the, the community up there. It's a large community. There's like 37 sites, houses, great kivas, and this great house. Um, and they, by the way, collected some of the shirts that I looked at. Other shirts were collected by the Park Service after the land was bought by, by the uh, National Park Service. Okay, so Aztec North. If we had the PowerPoint here, and I could show you the beautiful map of it, you would immediately recognize Aztec North as something that looks chocolate. It's got the D shape, it's facing south, it's huge. Uh, but it's a really strange great house because it doesn't seem to have any masonry, or very little masonry. What you see when you walk around it is alignments of river, co river cobbles, like cobbles, and chunks of burnt adobe. So what it looks like is a great house that was built out of adobe. Uh, that's not completely unprecedented in the Chacoan world, but there's really only one other uh, adobe Chacoan great house, Abyssani. So as far as Aztec North, the going theory is that the adobe was some kind of an expedient effort. They, uh, they knew what a Chacoan great house was supposed to look like, they wanted to build one, but either they didn't have the manpower power to transport the sandstone, they didn't have the skills to build masonry, or the Chacoan overlords hadn't arrived yet. <laughs> um, so they built this adobe thing. It kind of looks, it's the right shape, it's the right size. Plaster it white and no one will know the difference. And so <laughs> they built this thing and called it a great house. Okay, sorry. Um, besides the strange construction, Aztec North is also interesting as part of this elaborate cultural landscape at Aztec. So picture a triangle. You've got Aztec East, and Aztec West are the base, and then Aztec North is the top. Uh, there's a road that runs straight through the middle of the triangle, and everything at Aztec, all the tri-walls, all the other outbuildings, are symmetrically sited within that uh, triangle. Another interesting thing about this is that it seems to be reproducing a part of the cultural landscape at Chaco Canyon. So Aztec West stands in for Pueblo Bonito, Aztec East stands in for Chetro Kettle. Aztec North stands in for Pueblo Alto. So that's a little background of why this is a really fascinating site and worth going back to. So as far as my study sites, in addition to the Great House, I also looked at shirts from four other sites. Three of them were small house mounds um, on the western end of the terrace. And the, four, the other site is a, a pair of buildings that flanks the road that goes up, up the uh, mesa. Um, it's a really interesting site. It's probably not just domestic since it is associated with the great house and with the road. Okay. 
So today I want to talk about three things that I've learned from the surface ceramics. First of all, excuse me, allergies. Um, first of all, the, I'm going to talk about the dating of the sites I used, uh, main ceramic dating, uh, to date all of the sites. Secondly, I'll talk about what that tells us and, and what the, the ceramics tell us about the interrelationships of sites on the terrace. And finally, what I learned about the trade relationships uh, to Chaco and to other parts of the region. Okay, I'll start with dating. Uh, as some of you know, I have to give a shout out to Peter McKenna, who I haven't actually met yet, but I will. Um, who, uh, he obviously analyzed many of these shirts and had a date range for Aztec North. Uh, just so you know, my data calculations are, uh, first of all, based on a quantitative method of ceramic mean dating. Uh, and also, I had more shirts than he had to work with. Um, so I did mean ceramic dating based on the known production date ranges of each ceramic type. I won't give you the details, but I can talk to others, talk to some of you afterwards if you're interested. Basically, uh, my work confirmed the kind of dates more or less with a little bit more data and with the quantitative method. Okay, so to cut to the chase, my mean ceramic date for Aztec North Great House was 1104, plus or minus 39 years. So the range is 1065 to 1143, which is pretty close to Stein and McKenna's published date range of 1090 to 1150. And if we remember the construction at Aztec West gets off the ground around 1110, these dates are pretty intriguing, right? We have to be careful not to fixate on that 1104 date. It's just a mean. Uh, the real date of construction could be earlier, could be later. But if we take that mean as some, something near the, the real date, then Aztec, Nor Aztec North was built a few years before Aztec West. Okay. I also have dates for the other sites. Um, I had a mean date of 1107 for one of the other houses, which is pretty close to the Great House, uh, but a little bit after the Great House is built. Another house had a mean date of 1134, so 30 years after the Great House is built. And then I have a mean ceramic date for that roadside site, which is 1120, which is 16 years after the Great House, which is the year that we think Aztec East is being built. So one consequence of all of this is that it's very possible that the Great House came first, that there was not a pre-existing community when, when Aztec North was being built, with the caveat that the houses I looked at were in the West. I looked at just a couple of them, really. Uh, and so there's other houses in the East that would need to be tested. Okay, in addition to comparing the chronologies, the ceramics confirmed a very uh, short and tight occupation period for all of the sites. There's no indication of occupation before Pueblo II. And there's also no, no indication of continued residence after 1200, which is very different from Aztec West and Aztec East, right? Okay, the other major focus of my study was to look at where the pottery came from. Uh, the results, first, there was a conspicuous absence of pottery from the northern San Juan. I looked at about 1,500 shirts total, and of those, 40 were clearly from the northern San Juan. Um, most of the pottery was local, which we can tell really well at this point with uh, um, methods that Lori Reed at uh, Aztec has developed. We've got the silty clay, we've got the non-porphyritic local crushed rock temper. But there was a lot of trade wear at Aztec North. It was Cibola and it was Chuscan trade wear. 15% of the total assemblage at the Great House was Cibola, and 16% was Chuscan. So whatever Aztec North is about, it seems to be looking southward and westward rather than to the north. And it seems to be hooked into Chaco and trade networks. Um, and there was, there was Chuscan and Cibola pottery at all the sites that I looked at. Uh, by the way, for anyone who's thinking about Bisaani, we only had one Socorro shirt at Aztec North, which is a big difference from Bisaani, uh, which is the other Adobe greenhouse. Okay, finally, the pottery also suggests a real difference in the function between the Great House and the other structures on the terrace. The Great House had a significantly larger portion of jars to bowls compared to any of the other sites. So 47% of the whiteware jar work, sorry, of the whiteware at the Great House was jars compared to percentages in the low to mid-30s for all the other sites. 
So whatever they're doing with all those white jars, <laughs> I'm not going to speculate what that is, but it's a pattern that suggests some different activities at the Great House than at other terrace sites. The Great House also had more of both the Cibola and Chuskin tra trainwares than other sites. None of which is all that surprising if you're thinking, oh yes, this is obviously a Chaco and Great House, right? But if you're thinking that it's just an emulation where they're trying to fake it, uh, then I think that my data is pretty interesting because they're faking it pretty well. <laughs> so, all in all, I think what my data has added is some complication, right? Uh, we have these mean ceramic dates. I've got this quantitative method that has suggested a date um, that is earlier than Aztec West. But also, it seems like the sites on the terrace might not all be contemporaneous. The Great House has that early mean ceramic date compared to all the other sites I've looked at. All of the sites are plugged into trade networks of Chuskin and Cibola pottery with very little northern San Juan pottery. And finally, uh, the Great House is looking like something more than domestic. More trade wear, more jars to bowl than bowls. Okay, and on a bigger level, part of the reason that I'm really interested in pinning down the date for Aztec North is to understand when the larger cultural landscape starts to take shape. Are they planning it from the start, when they first build their first great house, or do they build one great house first and decide they need more? In other words, when do they decide they need a second chaco? Uh, <laughs> I had some thoughts about this in my thesis. I'm afraid I don't really have time to get into it today, uh, as I realized as I was preparing this. But um, this is sort of what I'm working on, hoping to publish a paper soon on this. And also, um, my thesis, I believe, is available online or will be soon, and all the data is, is on there as well on ProQuest. And stay tuned, because hopefully my dissertation will go even further in adding to our understanding of Aztec North. And I just want to close by um, thanking everybody at Aztec North, Lori Reed, and Aaron Adams, and everyone else who made my work possible. Thank you very much.